peace. And I want you to understand this. Peace is not the absence of troubles in your life, but peace is the presence of Jesus in your life. And this is what we call the peace of God. Frank on the mic, gonna bring a message of grace. Faith race. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Faith Race podcast for another amazing episode. I'm Frank Kambembo. I'm your host for this episode also. And um, I first want to thank God for the amazing reviews and thank you guys for all the amazing reviews and report that we received from uh, our last episode where we spoke about gratitude. It was really, really amazing. And today, again, we're going to dive deep into the Word of God and, you know, take some riches and some wealth that are hidden in the Word of God. And today's topic, I'm going to talk about finding peace in times of trouble finding peace in times of trouble and i believe that this is going to be a blessing for someone who is watching or listening this episode but before starting i want you to understand something is that we live in a world that is filled with too much turmoil and uncertainty and too many troubles in this world we live in a world that is filled with trouble and as christians we are not immune to these challenges. You know, some people believe that when you become a Christian, when you become a believer, you don't have to face uh, obstacles and challenges or difficulties anymore. Jesus never said that we will never face op uh, challenges or obstacles. But he said that he's going to be with us in those challenges and in those obstacles. And today I want to talk about finding peace, even in those times of trouble that we may face in our lives. You know, though we are not immune as believers, though we are not immune to the challenges of life, but we have to understand that we have a unique hope and peace that can sustain us in the midst of those troubles. And that hope and peace is found only in the person of Jesus. In John chapter 16, verse uh, 33, Jesus himself said, I have told you these things so that in me, in Jesus, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. I want you to say this. This is Jesus talking. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. He didn't say in this world, you might have trouble. Or in this world, sometime you may or not. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. So Jesus is letting you know that. The troubles of life is something as something that will happen to you, whether you are a believer or not. Becoming a Christian doesn't make you immune to the challenges of life. You will face the challenges of life. You will face the trouble, um, the troubles of this life. But Jesus continues to say, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He said, I am telling you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world that you are living, you are going to face trouble. These are the words of Jesus. Je these are the words of Jesus. But what I love with Jesus here is that though he's letting you know that you will have trouble in the world, it's not to scare you, but he's giving you an assurance. He say, Jesus is actually promising you peace in the face of troubles. He's letting you know that there is trouble that is coming, but there is peace in me to face those troubles. So he's not scaring you when he's telling you that the troubles of life are a reality, but he's letting you know that Though the struggles of life, the troubles of life are a reality, you can still find peace in me. The peace, you know, peace, the peace that we are talking about is not the absence of trouble, but peace is the presence of Jesus. And I want you to understand this. Peace is not the absence of troubles in your life, but peace is the presence of Jesus in your life. And one thing you have to understand about peace is that Real peace is not calming the storm around you, but real peace is about calming the storm inside you. You know, the storm around you can disappear, but if the storm in, inside of you is still around and present, you will not have peace. Things uh, around you may look calm, may look peaceful, but if the troubles are still in your heart, you will never find peace. Because the peace that Jesus brings is not calming the things that are around you, 
but it's about calming the, the, the storm that is inside you. And I want you to understand that, that. And Jesus is actually called in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, he's called the Prince of Peace because he is the one who brings peace in your troubled mind and your troubled heart. When your heart is troubled, when your mind is troubled, Jesus is the one who brings peace and he's called the Prince of Peace. Actually, the peace of Jesus is not based on external circumstances, things that are happening outside. But the peace that Jesus brings is based on his presence in your life. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, I give you my peace. I do not give to you like the world gives, but this is my peace that I'm giving to you. He's letting you know that the peace that he brings is different than the peace that the world gives. The peace that Jesus gives you, it will help you to navigate the troubles of life. It will help you to navigate the troubles of life. And in Philippians chapter 4, we actually saw it in the previous episode as well. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, Paul writes, he says, And the peace of God, which transcend all understanding or which surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. This peace is beyond human comprehension. This peace is beyond everything that you can understand. This peace brings calmness. It guards your mind. It guards your heart and keeps you secure in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to repeat this again. This peace does not immune you or makes you make you immune to the challenges of life. But this peace that Jesus brings actually helps you to navigate the challenges of life with confidence with confidence not with stress but you are going through the challenges of life with a strong confidence that jesus is with me and i am not alone in this battle i'm going to take an example in the bible uh joseph for example joseph had the promises of god in his life joseph had a dream he had a dream that his brothers, his mother, his father were bowing to him that he was going to be a very, very strong person. But throughout the life of Joseph, you will see that Joseph is faced with betrayal from um, his brothers, his own brothers, betrayal from his brothers. I'm, I'm sure Joseph maybe could have asked the question, where is God in all this? Where is God in everything that I'm going? And then he goes, he becomes a slave. And in the house of his master, and when he goes into the house of his master, he, the, the, the wife of his master actually lies about him. He, she lies about him that he wanted to sleep with her. He's thrown into prison. Joseph had all the reasons in the world to not trust God anymore. All the reason in the world to lose it all. But he remained faithful to God. This is the kind of peace that Jesus brings to you. No matter what happens to you, no matter the difficult things that happen to you, you remain confident that Jesus is with you because his presence with you is your guarantee of a successful Christian life. I hope you're following me. But there's another, there's another person in the Bible that I love and it's about Paul. The same person who wrote about the peace of God that surpasses all understanding that we read in Philippians 4 verse 7. Paul was a guy who was persecuted, shipwrecked, in prison, yet he wrote about the peace of God. Yet he spoke about the peace of God. Yet he experienced the peace of God. There's actually an example in Acts chapter 16 when he is with uh, Silas in prison. The Bible says he was in prison, chained with shackles, in prison with Silas. But the Bible says that at midnight, he begins to praise God. How do you praise God when you are unjustly in prison you are thrown in prison not for a crime just for preaching the gospel but at midnight you are praising god there must be something about that person that the world has not discovered and this is what we call the peace of god the peace of jesus which surpasses all understanding he was in a prison but he was praising god even in a prison he didn't let his prison or his current circumstances to remove the peace of God from him, but he remained with that peace that surpasses all understanding. So we are talking about finding peace in times of trouble. You know, when you have Jesus, 
your peace is not dictated by the outside world, but by the presence of Jesus inside you. When you have the person of Jesus, your peace will never be dictated by the outside world, by what is happening outside. No matter what is happening outside, you will remain confident in Jesus who lives inside of you. And I'm quickly going to show you some practical application to experience this peace of God in your life, to find this peace of God um, in the times of troubles that you may be experiencing. And the first thing, as I said, that the peace, this peace that I'm talking about is about the presence of Jesus. So the first thing is continually seek God's presence. In times of trouble, God's presence through prayer, meditation, and worship should be your priority. Not stress, not calling your friends or other people or other people around you, but turning to God's presence, seeking the presence of God. In Psalm chapter 46, verse 1, the Bible says, God is our refuge, a strength, an ever-present help in trouble. I want you to see this. He said, God is our refuge and God is our strength. And he said, and God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. Meaning when you seek his presence, he is your help and your peace for the troubles in your life. In the TPT version, I love, he says, God, you are such a safe and powerful place to find refuge. You are a proven help in time of trouble, more than enough and always available whenever I need you. Listen to this, always available whenever I need you. God is always available whenever you need him whenever you need him no matter what you're going through or what is happening to you make seeking the presence of god your priority even when your world seems to crumble you can find refuge and peace in the presence of god so seek continually the presence of god through prayer meditation and uh, and prayer meditation worship seek his presence he is a refuge and he is a help in times of troubles. You know, when the, Jesus, the disciples were in the boat with Jesus and the storm started, you know, to rise and rage all around, they woke Jesus up. They said, Master, don't you care that you, we are perishing? Jesus woke up and calmed the storm. So if you are going through a trouble right now, a very situa a situation that is stormy, that has a lot of storm around you, Wake Jesus up, seek his presence, and he will calm the storms in your life. In your life. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes fixated on the person, fixed on the person of Jesus. Look to Jesus. The Bible says, look to Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Look to Jesus. No matter the troubles in your life, seek his presence and look for him. You remember uh, Peter in Matthew chapter 14. The Bible says when Jesus told him to walk on water, to come to Jesus to walk on water, as long as his, his eyes were fixed on Jesus, he could walk on water, no matter the storm. But when he took his eyes and his focus off Jesus to the storm, he began to sink. The same thing with us. Let's keep our eyes on, on Jesus. Let's continually seek his presence in isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 in the nlt the bible says you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you all whose thoughts are fixed on you the bible is the bible is saying that god will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on jesus so fix your mind on jesus fix your mind on jesus so that you can experience this peace. You know, the devil always wants to take your focus away from Jesus. He will try to bring so many difficulties in your life. Why? Just to take your focus away from Jesus. Because when your focus is taken away from Jesus, you become vulnerable. Vulnerable to him and to all his attacks. Amen. And the second point that I want you to do after seeking the presence of God is trust in God's sovereignty trust in God's sovereignty. I acknowledge that God is sovereign. Believe that God is in control. 
even when the circumstances around you seem chaotic. Believe that God is in control. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that all things work together for your good. Not some things. Not good things. Not bad things. He said all things. Whether it be something good that is happening, something bad that is happening, the Bible is saying that no matter what is happening, it is working for your good. So trust that God is in control of your situation. When you are seeking his presence, trust that he takes care of every detail in your life. Every single detail in your life. Trust in that. Trust in him. That he's taking care of everything in your life because all things work together for your good. For your good. Your good to you. Hallelujah. And the last point to practice this, um, to experience the peace of God, is actually what we spoke about the last time. Practice gratitude. Give thanks to God in all circumstances. The Bible says, whatever may happen to you, continue to thank God. God wants you to do that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, in the easy version. Whatever may happen to you, continue to thank God. Keep on practicing gratitude because gratitude brings the peace of God in your life. So in conclusion to this episode, I just want us to know that in times of troubles, we can find peace in Jesus Christ. In times of trouble, no matter what is happening, we can find peace in Jesus. His peace is not based on circumstances, but his peace is based on his presence in our lives. So let's continually seek his presence. Let's continually abide in him. Let's continually fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's continually trust that he is in control. And let's continually thank him for what he's doing in our lives. And I trust God that we will experience his peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you so much for this episode. And I really pray with all my heart that the peace of God may fill your heart. No matter what you may be going through, be it a financial crisis, a financial situation, or in your family, or in your workplace, or in your school, or in your relationships, I pray that the peace of God may fill your life and your heart, and that you may really experience this peace in every area of your life. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a review for this episode it's really amazing and don't forget to like to comment and to share with other people and i believe that we're gonna meet again next time and i'm gonna see you again and um, i bless god for your for your lives and see you again for the next episode god bless you i love you